All right. Uh, All right. We've got Coach Chris Wiesahan coaches our tight ends, and he's our offensive special teams coordinator. We'll open it right up for questions for Coach Wiesahan. Does that mean you're the guy in charge of the fakes and all that? Thing? Yeah, we do it as a staff, but yeah, we uh, we like to be innovative and give uh, ourselves an edge on special teams. Obviously, you know, when they're def- trying to defend the uh, formation as well as the natural play as a punt, for example, or the trick play, it adds a lot to their week. I know that's Coach Collins. Kind of one of his things he very much harps on is taking advantage of those and flipping those opportunities and stuff. Oh, absolutely. It's a schematic advantage, and we got really good players, and we have a lot of diversity on our team, so we're going to take advantage of, of that personnel-wise and scheme-wise. How big was it for you to get Tyler Davis to transfer here? Well, he was an elite player. We had actually coached against him, as you well know, and uh, to get him here with his leadership skills, uh, his talent, uh, and his work ethic uh, really set the tone for us in the offseason. He's carried that on into the into the spring ball. He was kind of talking the other day, I guess it was Saturday when we last spoke to him, about have, really taking on the responsibility of being the leader, being the voice of kind of, um, I guess, that experience level and everything. Is that something that you see from him, taking that responsibility to be that guy in that room? There's no question. He, he's a leader on and off the field. He's really good in the room. Uh, when the kids take their time and have their meetings to meet on their own, uh, he's that voice in the room. And then when on the field, whether it's uh, lining up on uh, stretch, we're getting guys lined up on special teams. You hear his voice, and obviously on offense, uh, he's that tie between the quarterback and the receivers, and he's echoing the play and getting everybody aligned. And he does a really strong job in that area. How's the transition been in terms of you flipping guys like Cooksey or, or Josh Tukes and to making them into serviceable tight ends? Well, I think our job as a coach is to take kids where they never thought they could go. Uh, and so that your, your role is to mentor them, coach them, and, and develop them. And I think they've taken that and uh, they're running with, they're excited about it. You know, they're getting a lot of work uh, through our process of practice. They're getting a lot of reps and they're playing football. And that's what they came here to do. Imagine with the way you guys have spread spring ball out and just the amount of reps you get that, that, that kind of can help hasten that learning curve a little bit for the, the players. It ex- accelerates our entire team. So as you know, it looks like chaos, but it's orchestrated. And the purpose is to get as many reps for each kid as we can get. And when that happens, and they're playing football, that's how you, if you want to get good at ping pong, what do you do? You play ping pong. If you want to play, get good at football, you play football. So instead of having guys lined up on the sidelines watching, we have them engaged and they're coached and we coach them on the run and there's a bunch of film for them to learn from. Tyler's played at the college level, but he hasn't played in this offense. Nonetheless, he's probably helped for everybody teaching nuances of the position more than the scheme, is that fair to say? Well, he has a good background in the spread. You know, he has a really good background in the spread, and I think that for him to acclimate so quickly is just really as a result of how, how bright he is. And, and the challenge I, I told him was, when you go to the NFL and you're drafted and you go to the first meeting, you should know the playbook by the second meeting. Not the next install, but the playbook. And he's really gravitated that and taken on, taken on the challenge of learning quickly. For you, I mean, you're working with so many guys that are either new to the tight end position or returning after having been away and so forth, and Tyler's new to the system. Is there an advantage that everybody is kind of starting from scratch and that you don't have to coach away bad habits? These guys haven't developed bad habits at tight end because they haven't been tight ends in some cases. Well, you always, as a new staff, you always start from ground up, right? So my teaching progression is not going to change if I walked in and I had tight ends that had played for three years or played for one year. You have to start at the base and work your way up and see where they're at, and then maybe you have to do that drill again, or maybe you have to reach C-set, or maybe you can move on and, and progress in your teaching. But it, it's all going to start from the basis. And fundamentally, that's what we do here across the board. We're going to teach tackling from the ground up, right? We're going to teach blocking from the ground up. We're going to teach catching the football, fingers, wrists, elbows, shock absorbers from the ground up as a group. What do you think Tyler Davis' ceiling is? It's, it seems like he was in an offense that wasn't particularly super productive last year. It seems like there's a lot of room for him to kind of put up some big numbers and this type of offense and really kind of set himself up as a guy who could be drafted down the line. Well, I think he can be an X factor. And I think in this offense, he's going to be a guy that can obviously run block and then he can vertically stretch the field. When you have those two components at the tight end, you have a lot of worth. And how far we can get him to his goals, you know, we'll know by the 12th game. You know, we'll know after the 14th game, hopefully. What's the, the level of difficulty of learning tight end specifically as, as someone new? Well, you have to know it all. It's very similar to quarterback, right? Because you have to know the contours of the secondary as well as the box play as well as blitz assignments, right? Because a lot of times you'll be in those protections as well in the run game, be accountable for blitzers. So you have to know 
at all from the like from the quarterback's eyes the tight end you have to know secondary rotation as well as alignment of the front and the box so it's uh labor intensive um but uh, the more football that you know and you can accumulate that knowledge is power and once you're empowered you know what to do versus a variety of looks it becomes really simple when it comes to the guys that we just talked to a few of them said you know we went to coach collins and we took the initiative to kind of say like hey we want to be in this room, we want to do, we want to move, we want to do this. When it comes to that and when you see that kind of hunger to do that in those guys, what does that mean for you when you're coaching them? Well, it's exciting because they want to do those things, right? So then it just empowers you to coach as a coach because you're not pulling teeth, right? You're just feeding them and educating them and growing them and challenging them every day to be the very best. Like, hey, you wanted this, you got this. You, know, you probably didn't know it was going to be with me, so hold on. It's going to be a wild ride. But uh, I think they've embraced it. Uh, you know, my, my job, again, is to challenge them every day. Uh, and then love them up. You know, your job, you got to love your kids. Switching over to the kicking game, uh, getting the ball in the end zone on kickoffs was an issue last year. What have you seen from the guys so far in that? Well, aspect? I think King and Wesley have both done a great job. I mean, I think they've been phenomenal uh, in our in our kickoff drills. Uh, we've challenged them. They've stepped up. They know it's a hot competition, and iron sharpens iron, right? So the more those two go head to head, it's an exciting time. Circling back to the tight ends, when you're installing everything, there's inline work, there's flex work, H work. Sometimes I guess they're going to play some fullback in some situations. Do you throw everything at them at the, uh, on the front end and then circle back and fine tune in areas, or do you install one type of work at a time? Well, what, what I try and do is, is teach it globally. So my kids are going to know what the other people do as well. So when they know the blueprint of the blocking scheme, like if you know what the right tackle and the right guard are doing, it's going to be really – really easy to understand where you're going to insert on a bob play or a power play. So we teach it schematically is like, here's the scheme. You better know the combination calls between the line and then easily know where you insert. And we have words that will help inform them. But it, it, there's no, there, there'll be no surprises when you know the blueprint of the blocking scheme and then you know where you're inserting. And it all comes down to communication. We all have to talk. It has to be one band, one sound. And we echo that from defense to offense to special teams. We're all communicating. And once that communication becomes concise, then you can be really physical because you're not unsure. It's hard to be physical when you're unsure. So as coaches, our job is to take that uncertainty out of it. How's the transition been for you coaching the tight ends and have been an offensive line coach? I imagine it's smoother than maybe if you were asked to coach like running backs or something. Well, I've coached every position on offense at the Division One or pro level. So my, I just think I'm a football coach, and I, and, and I try to be the best teacher I can be. Um, so whether it's teaching a kid how to frame a football or how to teach him to pass set, which they're going to do as a tight end, or run block, it's just coaching and teaching. So you go back to your base fundamentals, and you move it to that position. I how imagine does it was easier, too, since – familiar with the offense and had all that knowledge base from oh, and obviously Dave and I have worked together and have a good uh, I'd like to say broad background in the offense so I think I can help the kids and it, and it helps in all the transition too because I can look out and I can tell the wide out hey man it's a seven you have this and hey quarterback your eyes got to be here when we're really moving it around and going at a fast pace how did the decision to coach tight ends this year come about did you go to coach Collins and say Hey, I'd like to take tight ends. Or no, I just think it, I think I think it's his job to hire the best staff that he can hire, and I think Brent was an available guy with a Georgia Tech background. We were mutual friends. We've been friends for a long time, and I've coached a lot of different positions and and had some interest in special teams. And that opportunity came up. Tyler Cooksey, what have you seen out of his development? Oh, I think he's ascended rapidly. Uh, he was a guy that really didn't know how to frame a football, didn't know anything about plucking and tucking, couldn't get his foot in the ground. Uh, probably the first two practices, and he came in and he watched some film of me when I'd coach wideouts in a couple different places and watched the drills, gave the explanation of the why and body control, and he's really gotten better. And we're, we're excited about him. And he's done some really good things on special teams as well. When, when it comes to frame a football, how do you present So when you go to frame a football, and the ball's above your waist, you want to have your hands looking through the diamond, your fingers spread, and your fingers are shock absorbers, and so are your wrists, and so are your elbows. So a lot of kids will do this, they'll get a back pour, the ball's going to hit off, or their hands will be off plane, and you'll see a ball hit this hand and that hand that's dropped. If you frame the football and look through the diamond, and you give with your fingers, your wrists, and your elbows, they're shock absorbers, it's much easier to see the ball from here than it is from here. And as a guy that's insecure about his hands, a lot of times they want a body catch. Well. As soon as that hits any part of this, you're done. So he's really focused on framing the football, fingers, wrists, elbows, and, and it's, sh it's showing up on tape. I think Saturday had a great crossing route when he made that catch, and it was a perfect frame going across and not an easy catch. We're very proud of his progress. When it comes to running routes, do these guys have a route? You're running this route, period, or do they sometimes, are they going to be asked to read coverages? Absolutely. And break a route? We're going to read coverages. So 
again, triangle reads, you know, what's your triangle to your side? How are you attacking the leverage of the defender? All those things will come into play throughout our offense. You know, the running backs included, they'll have adjustments off of coverage, off of looks, off of a blitz. So those are things that they have to acclimate to. A few more for coach. The, the two walk-ons, uh, Joseph and, and Josh, uh, kind of were, like it seemed like they seemed really excited to be getting a chance. To, you mean Chewy, right? Two, yes. <laughs> what, uh, so you guys know that story, right? No. no, please. So he's in fourth grade, summer before. He's got a, a good-looking friend, and he was Han Solo, and <laughs> Joseph, Joseph became oh, became man. Chewy. Oh. And I said, Well, you're lucky. You're lucky he didn't call you Leia. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, you know. Chewie's done a great job, and he's going to be a guy to catch a ball in the flat. He knows all the insertions in the run. He's a physical guy. He's ascending on the special team's depth chart. Uh, and then Tukes is a guy that has gained, I think, 11 pounds since I've gotten here. And now, and now Chewie's probably lost 17. So he's gone the other way. I have some diet plans for those guys. Um, just get them to their optimal level to help us. And uh, Tukes has become a really good route runner. The more lead he gets in his pencil, the better run blocker he's going to be. So we're excited about him and what he's doing.